Now, my name is James Bowden, and I'm the um, admissions tutor for History of Art. And what that means is, is that when you send your UCAS application, I'm the person that reads it. And I'm also the person who's at the end of the UG admissions um, email address, which sounds like a very um, kind of anonymous thing when you see it on our website, but actually it comes straight to me and I'm the person that replies to those. Now, you feel free to contact me at any point um, in the application process. I get inquiries at all sorts of different times of year um, about all sorts of things that you've probably never even imagined could be um, a problem or a question. And I'm always very, very happy to, to respond to those um, inquiries as, as quickly as I can. So um, don't, don't be um, afraid of, of just sending an email or if um, it's something that you want to reply about immediately, then um, look up on the website, my staff page, and you can find out my office hours, and then just give me a call during the, those office times, and I can talk to you as well. And also, we'll have um, more than enough time after this to chat a little bit informally if you've got questions that you don't want to shout out at the end of this, okay? So Michael gave you um, a little bit of an idea about why you should come and study here, about the location, about our expertise, about our fabulous publications and, and partnerships. Um, so what I'm really going to do is just to take you through, um, well, some of the ways in which you can keep in contact with us, um, and also some of the structure of our degree. Um, and I know that there's all sorts of different reasons why you would choose a university that are not always based on um, the degree content. Um, you, you'll often be thinking about the city, about the university itself, um, about where your mates are going, um, about you know, what the nightlife is like and all of those kind of things. But the best that I can really do, um, and my students can tell you all about those things later on, the best that I can really do is to tell you a little bit about what our programme consists of. Um, and that's the stuff that you can really compare with, with things that are on other people's websites. So then I will kind of bombard you with an awful lot of information and with an awful lot of images in the next 25 minutes or so. Um, all of this stuff is also on our website, and that's the main source of, of really up-to-date information. So don't feel the need to come scribble everything down, because actually it'll all be there on our, on our web pages as well. So first of all, just to, to start off by saying that if you're not following us on Twitter or Facebook um, already, do do this. Now, it sounds a bit strange that you'd, that you'd want to, to do that, but actually it's, it's a really good way of getting a sense of the kind of rhythms of what we do here, about what we're doing on a weekly basis, because um, we, um, we're tweeting all the time about the kind of trips that our students are going on, about the kind of events that are available here, about what we're up to um, that Mike was talking about with other exhibition, with exhibitions and other institutions, and also um, some of our, our recent publications as well. So it's a really, really good way to keep up to date. Um, so History of Art um, York, um, at Art History York is the, the Twitter account. Um, and then there's this Facebook page as well, um, which is Department of History of Art, University of York. And the Twitter page is great because we um, also get tweeted at by um, some pretty interesting people too. So it allows you to kind of really get a good sense of, of what the local area is like that Michael was talking about as well. And also um, things like student groups. Um, and you'll get a chance to meet some of um, the representatives from those student groups and the galleries that are on, on campus later on. But this is also a good way of finding out about that um, as well. And, and the kind of, like I was, like I was saying, the kind of cycles that, that, that we go through in here. Um, the other thing to, to follow is our student bloggers. Um, now, this is the best way to get an experience of a genuine student's experience throughout the year. So ev every year we have a different student blogger. Um, this year we've got two. Um, so Rob is doing um, blogging for the second year. And you can find the links to this on our admissions page, um, on this page called An Artificial Eye, with some pictures of Michael and I hanging out at the head of them. Um, and then Emily Inglis is um, a third year finalist student, um, and she's also writing um, a, a blog on a, on a different page. Um, and you can read all about the recent trip that she took to Basel with her third year class. So there's, there's an awful lot of ways for you to kind of keep in touch and, and keep an eye on, on what we're up to and check whether what I'm saying is true or not. <laughs> because there are other sorts of perspectives. And I think often the student perspective is the one that's really, really important to your, your experience here rather than mine. 
So just to give you an idea of the structure of the degree, um, we're going to start with um, stage one, um, where really um, we want to give you a very thorough grounding in what history of art actually is um, as a discipline. And we do this through a number of different kinds of um, delivery. Um, we're using lectures, but each one of those lectures is supported by a workshop, um, which are fairly, which are on a, a fairly small scale, but I'll talk a little bit about that later. And then we also have seminars, which are more kind of reading based. So just to take you through some of these courses, one of the first of the um, lecture and workshop courses that we do in the first term, the Materials of Art and Architecture, which is based very much, as the name suggests, on materials. Um, so we look at painting, at sculpture, at printmaking, at photography, week by week with a different lecture from a different specialist. So you'll get to know the whole of the department by the end of this, this course. Um, each of us really focusing on how materials really matter for, for the way in which um, artworks mean. Now, what we're looking at in the picture here is some fragments of stained glass, and later on um, we should have time to have a little look around the um, stained glass workshop um, here, where we're actually conserving stained glass on site, which is pretty amazing actually, because this stuff is usually you know, kind of many feet um, up in the windows of the Minster, and you don't often get a chance to really look at it close up, never mind um, handle it. So this is a pretty kind of unique um, opportunity that, that we have here. Um, and Sarah does a, a lecture on this course where she talks um, about that. And you saw this evening how many people there were just coming to apply for that, that master's course. Um, it's a very, very popular um, thing here, because partly because it's, it's not available elsewhere. But that's just one of the kind of materials that we're, we're looking at in that, that lecture course. So that's a lecture for the whole of the year, followed by um, a workshop in a class of no more than 15 students who will then talk about the lecture. So this, this situation where I'm talking at you is actually quite rare. Um, it's always being supported by um, smaller group teaching to check that, that, that you've really understood and taken in what you're talking about. The other uh, main lecture course that we run in the first year, and this runs in the second term, is called Reinventing Antiquity. And it's more of, rather than focusing on materials, this focuses more oops, on a kind of broader history. Um, really going from um, the kind of classical era all the way through um, until um, the present, actually, and really, really thinking about how um, a classical thread runs through that, that history and what that means at different historical moments. So on the one hand, it's a history of style, um, but on the other, it's a history also of, of kind of changing um, ideas around the reception of, 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 of the classical um, in both art and architecture. The um, two seminar courses, the first one that we run is called Critical Readings in the History of Art, and this really gives you an introduction to um, some of the, the kind of foremost writers on history of art, um, from the real foundations of the discipline up until um, the present day. Um, and during the course of, of running this course, we've actually had lectures given by some of the people that we're reading on the course. So it's, it, it's been a very... Um, been a very interesting course to, to do in that respect because people kind of can't believe that the person that they've been, they've been reading has really kind of founded um, certain parts of the discipline. It's, it's right there and they can have a, an actual conversation with them. That, that can be pretty special. Um, in the second term, we do um, this course, which um, is, is often quite scary um, for, for students um, on theory for art historians because this is where we look at the kind of philosophy um, and uh, ideas like psychoanalysis and Marxist theory, which have been used by art historians to look at art objects. Um, what we're looking at here is the owl of wisdom um, on, a, on a coin um, in, a, in a very contemporary artwork, which, um, which really, th this film, if you were to see the whole thing, um, really makes, makes a lot of use of some of these sorts of theoretical ideas about money and um, exchange. So this gives you a real grounding, not only for reading text by art historians who are using this theoretical background material, but also to go on and use this yourself um, in your own writing. Um, it's a course that lots of students find very demanding, but um, most students find extremely fulfilling as well. Um, and, uh, and together, these four courses um, really provide us kind of solid backbone for going on and, and doing things in much more specialised areas later in the degree. 
Also during um, the first year, there's the option of studying a language. Now, it, there are, um, on the website, you can see all of the different languages that we offer, because there's far too many for me to actually run through um, right here. Um, <clears throat> but um, if you've studied a language before, you can study it at um, a more advanced level. Um, and it's, there's about five different levels within each language that we offer, so there's, there's, pretty, there's a pretty good flexibility for, for choosing these, these sorts of things. Um, we know that, that not everybody feels that they want to do this, um, although we do strongly encourage it. Um, so we offer an alternative course to this if you don't want to study a language um, called The Art of Describing that looks very much um, at kind of art, art objects and architecture within the city of York. And it's very much based on kind of getting to know the city, but also learning how to write about it, how to write about um, art and architecture too. Um, what we value most of all is small group teaching um, and what we know, pe people who study techniques in teaching know that it is most effective to teach in a small group setting, so that's, that's what we do. Um, and we have groups of no more than 15, often those groups are actually quite a bit smaller than that at second year and, and third year level depending on the kind of popularity of the, the module. Um, and it means that students really get a chance to um, contribute to, to the seminar, um, where, yeah, we're leading it, um, standing at the front and often bringing in the slides, but actually the thrust of where we're going in each seminar is really led by, by the students themselves. Now, second year level, um, you're choosing four um, introductory kind of specialist modules, um, again, taught in these seminar groups of no more than 15 students, alongside um, a dissertation training module and also this museology and curatorship module, which I'll tell you a little about, about at the end. And I'm just going to speed incredibly quickly through a vast array of modules which we've offered um, over the last couple of years at second year level. And hopefully you'll see something that you, that you like in there. So this is some stuff that we've been um, teaching actually this year and, and last year is what I've, what I've put on this um, display. So the rise of the print, um, art of the avant-garde, so it looks at the um, early 20th century and predominantly in, in Europe. Um, medieval Jerusalem, um, looking um, at both architecture and um, illuminated manuscripts. Uh, this is my course, uh, Video Art and Performance, um, which is in new, predominantly in New York in the early 1970s. Um, 18th century British printmaking, so Hogarth there. Um, Art of the Dome, which looks at domed architecture, like right from the very origins of this as an architectural form, um, all the way through to, um, there's actually some stuff from, from the 1980s um, on that, that course. Um, contemporary art um, in the Mediterranean and Islamic world. Um, so there are some things which are actually very specialist, which you'd find it difficult to, to study um, elsewhere, even at this stage two level. Um, art in Venice from Bellini to Titian. Um, art and money, so we're really kind of interested not just in artworks themselves, but also in the, the whole art world and how it's kind of brought to bear on the way that we understand objects. Um, Castle Howard, so taking, um, making use of a, a real kind of um, stellar local resource. Um, more contemporary art, because it's a very, very popular, so we often are running more than one contemporary art module. Um, the Baroque, so looking at the 17th century material. Uh, futurism, St. Bala's dog. Uh, 19th century photography, and again, there are some fantastic collections in the local area of, of 19th century photography um, at Bradford, um, but also here in, in the city at the Railway Museum, also on campus. Um, 17th century realism, and isn't this just the best piece of painting ever? Ever. Look at that. That's amazing. It's the effect of light through water on um, that Velasquez. Um, the Gothic imagination, so thinking very much about um, architecture as well as art. Um, and the, the own, and all of these are choices that you can make, and you choose four of these modules, and we try and encourage people to get as much coverage as possible, um, both historically and also in terms of the kind of materials um, at stage two level. So then you can make really informed decisions about what you're choosing um, in your third year. Now the only course that's compulsory um, is this uh, museums and curating course, um, which we run in the summer term. It's a very um, kind of compact course. It, it runs across four weeks, but we pack an awful lot into that, where we're reading a lot about the history of museums, about how the kind of idea of the museum first arose, 
but we're also thinking about how we're going to curate um, exhibitions with actual um, institutions in the local area. So what students do for the assessment for this is to um, plan um, an, an imaginary exhibition, but one that's made for an actual space. And they get the chance to talk to curators, educate people who work in education, people who work in advertising in those institutions to talk about how they would actually approach this and to work with them. And it, it, it's, there's been some really stunning work that's come out of this course. Um, and we also work um, very closely on this with the Bose Museum. This is the, rack, the storage racks of the Bose Museum that you see here in, in County Durham and also with the Hepworth um, in, in Wakefield, at the, the, the institutions that we study in, in some, some depth, um, as well as working with the Railway Museum, the, um, when it's open, the Yorkshire, uh, the York Art Gallery, um, MIMA in Middlesbrough, um, and the Ferrans Gallery in Hull are the other case studies that we're really looking at on that, that course. Um, and these are some, some pictures of, of some of those, those institutions, the Henry Moore Institute. Um, and this is um, that, that photograph just in, enlarged because in, in the Hepworth, which if you've not been to, it's, it's really one of the, the most um, stunning um, buildings for, for viewing, viewing art in, I, I think, any, anywhere in the world. So it's, it's amazing that it's right on our, our doorstep. Um, Michael mentioned some of these partnerships, and these, these do have an effect on your um, undergraduate work because lots of curators from these museums come to us to tell us about their exhibitions. Sometimes years in advance of the exhibition actually happening. Sometimes to the point where you wonder if the exhibition ever will happen that you've, that you've heard about. Um, but it, there, there's real um, exposure to the professional art world for all of our students at, at, at every level. And Michael um, told you a little bit about you know, the direct involvement of some of our um, graduate students with this. But at an undergraduate level, we're always thinking of, of new ways to, to involve you in, in these partnerships as much as we possibly can. Oops. And Michael told you a little bit about these, these exhibitions that have happened over the, over the last year, and there's more information about these on the website as well. Now, during the second year, there's the option of um, going on the Erasmus Exchange Programme and studying abroad um, for a year, or for a single term if you'd, if you'd rather. Um, and Emanuele Luni, my, my colleague who runs this programme, he will be available um, in the common room um, later on to answer any of your questions really about, about Erasmus. Um, we've got a large number of tailored exchanges um, with universities within Europe. These are the ones which we're currently running um, in Florence, Bologna, Cologne, Leiden and Paris. And if you look at some of the um, other institutions who are offering art history courses, you'll see they have far fewer than we do. Um, so these are often actually quite demanding for us to run this, this many, but we really think it's worth it to have um, this kind of international exchange. Um, and all of these institutions are places which have great coverage in um, art and architectural history, so they've been you know, especially chosen, they're not just random universities, they're, they're the ones that we want to work with and where we want our students to have an experience of working with the experts there. So if you're interested in this, then, then do talk to um, a man like me for a minute and room about it later. Um, there's also opportunities to study um, abroad slightly further afield um, in the US, um, in Japan, um, and there are, there, these, these global programs change actually year on year, so do um, have a look on, on the General University website to check out what's um, available. Um, our students who have actually taken this up it's quite a daunting thing, actually, to, to spend a whole year in Hong Kong um, out of the middle of your degree. Um, but those students do come back um, very much kind of enriched by, by this experience. I mean, we encourage it um, as, as much as possible. Um, in the third year, um, this is the final year, and this is quite simple to explain, because you only do two um, core modules, which are usually um, specialist modules taught by us um, from our own research. Now, usually when people are teaching from their research, they're teaching from the book that they just finished that they wanted to go away and buy a copy of and, and learn. This is not what we do here, where we're really teaching from our current research, which we're in the process of doing. Now, this means that you actually get to contribute to that 
Um, and there's lots of my, my colleagues who are, who are writing things where they're having to kind of footnote their undergraduate students at the end of it because they've it triggered all sorts of really, really interesting ideas about the work that, that they're doing. This means that everything we do is kind of right at the cutting edge. It's the stuff where we're kind of putting our reputations on the line to publish these things and testing out some ideas with, with you in, in the seminar room. So they're, they're pretty exciting courses for us to be teaching. And you'll also write your own piece of independent research during that year, um, the dissertation, um, which is a long, um, concentrated piece of writing. So these are some of the third year options, um, architecture, gender and sexuality. This is Alma Lose's, um crazy fur covered bedroom. Um, Bosch and Bruegel, uh, Andy Warhol, which is the course that I teach, um, 19th century art in Paris, church, city and realm, um, a medieval course, uh, Rembrandt, Arc and Scale, which runs right from um, kind of prehistory all the way up to the Angel of the North. It's a really kind of fascinating way of, of thinking about art, which um, Emmanuel teaches the, the book with the ruler that we saw earlier. Um, art in the 18th century, a very um, a, a, a course which is uh, around kind of British art in particular, but also looking at it in a kind of European context. Uh, British art is one of the, one of the things that we have a real strength in here. Uh, the modernist object, um, this is Yuri Kusama um, here, a Japanese American artist. Um, impacts of the late antique. Um, image and identity in California, which is the um, other course that, that I teach. It's an image by a Yorkshire artist, David Hockney. Uh, Victorian sculpture. Um, art and patronage of 15th century Florence. There is an abstraction, and this is um, an installation shot from Michael's Mondrian exhibition um, that was on in Liverpool over the summer. Um, and also some, some really innovative new courses that are kind of thinking about new ways of thinking and approaching art history, um, like fashion in art history, um, art and law, which, we, um, which is taught with the School of Law. That should actually be called Art Law, I learned. This is what this is called as a, as a thing. It's Art Law, not Art and Law, but Art Law. Um, and this is frozen, throwing up all sorts of really fascinating questions about copyright, about ownership, about cultural property, um, and really kind of giving an idea of kind of ways in which um, you, might, you might want to, to think about um, having a career in this, this area afterwards. And also um, art and digital culture, which is absolutely things that were made like the last week um, that, that my colleague Chad is, is teaching. So really, um, it's a really up-to-date program where I think you're, you're getting stuff that's absolutely out the forefront both of art making and of, of art teaching. Um, in the third year, um, there, in the first term at the moment, there are study trips to um, Europe with um, all, almost all of the modules. Um, those that don't, there are kind of extensive trips within the, the country for, for a couple of days. Um, these are some, some images of students looking happy on a trip. Um, they're, not, they're not happy to be out of York, um, they're just happy to be on a trip. Um, these are, uh, this, this last term um, we took students to Florence, um, and Amanda took these students to Florence. Um, to, we took two trips to Paris, um, one to look at um, on the medieval um, cities course and the other one on, on interwoven on, on fashion and art history. Um, and then Chad took his group to uh, Basel. Um, where they got to hang out with the uh, architecture firm um, Herzog and Muron, amongst other things, and also um, do some, some really interesting uh, study trips to uh, museums that, have, that are really focused on, on digital um, display. Um, this, this I, just, I just like the photograph. We've got Cordula in the, uh, the, the Victoria and Albert stores looking at this amazing Schiaparelli dress, which was designed by Salvador Dali to look as if someone had torn at it. Um, and it, again, it's amazing to actually have the access to go and see these objects in the flesh, to kind of touch these things and really um, engage with them. Um, just to say a little bit about some opportunities on campus, um, so that's the end of, of the kind of programme bit of it, um, but this is just to sort of prep you for going over and talking to some of our, our students um, in, the, in the common room. And one of the, the most um, effective um, opportunities on, on campus for, for getting a job afterwards is um, students who've been involved with the Norman Ray um, Gallery, which is an art gallery on campus which is run by um, our students. They um, supply the whole programme, um, they do all of the shipping, they do all of the hanging, they do all of the wall plastering, um, believe it or not. 
Um, this is their, their new um, logo, which I like a lot better than the old one. Um, and these are some um, photographs from them installing work and also some of the exhibitions that they've had this year. And this, this show by Rafael Perez, um, the, uh, one of the curators from the Hepworth, um, came over and gave a talk and, and got to see this exhibition and, and talk to, to the students who'd organised it. So again, there are lots of kind of opportunities for actually kind of practically working with art um, here on campus. Um, Michael told you a little bit about some of the kind of exciting social things that, that students organise, and there are lots of um, student societies um, here, like the, the Art History Society, who organise regular events, which we also try and get in, involved with as, as, as often as we can as well. Um, so contact us at any time on this email address, which um, again is on, our, on the course page on, on the website, um, where you can ask me any, anything, anything you like. Now, I want to leave time for um, my head of department, um, Liz Pretjohn, who's going to give you um, just a little bit of a, a sample lecture that tells you a little bit about, about how we um, approach art objects and what we actually do um, as, as art historians. Um, well, I'm looking forward to this because I don't get many opportunities to, to hear Liz, Liz speak. Um, and this is um, on, on a topic which is uh, very much at, at, at the heart of her, of her scholarship.